Hey guys, it seems like just yesterday Avengers Infinity War came out and we already have Ant-Man and the Wasp. Now it's a funny movie with innovative fighting sequences and though I don't think it's gonna be anyone's favorite MCU film, it really doesn't disappoint. The humor definitely drives this film and Paul Rudd definitely delivers. Now although the film is smaller in scale, especially compared to Avengers Infinity War, that's not necessarily a bad thing. So depending on what you're really wanting from an MCU film, you might think it's good, you might think it's bad. I personally think it was kind of nice to just have a very lighthearted film and walking into the cinema and just laugh. Now, if you haven't seen the film, this is your spoiler warning. Now, in this film, we finally get hope as the Wasp, and the director gives fans exactly what they want, and they give Wasp the first action sequence, and it is so good! It was also nice seeing how this film connects with the other MCU films, notably Civil War. Now, Scott stole the suit and went to go fight with Captain America, and that didn't go well for Hope and her dad, Hank, because now they're on the run because Scott was using their tech. Now, in this film, we see Hope telling Scott that if he had asked her, she would have gone and she would have helped him, and she probably would have made sure he didn't get caught. So it was nice kind of seeing how that connected into Civil War and also why she wasn't there. In this film, we are introduced to the villain Ghost, and Ghost is a perfect foil for Ant-Man and the Wasp, because Ghost has the ability to phase through objects. Now, this leads to interesting fighting sequences, because you have Ant-Man and the Wasp shrinking and growing, and Ghost can phase through their punches and kicks and objects. So Ghost ended up being the perfect foil in the sense of seeing how these fights pan out visually for the audiences, so I really like that. Ghost's motivations in the film are self-preservation, because she's slowly, slowly fading away. She's basically decaying. So that's basically why she goes up against her superheroes, because she's essentially trying to save herself, they don't know that at the time. So it was really nice that the MCU gave us another villain that she kind of felt sympathy for and that it wasn't just a straight up bad guy, girl, woman. But Quantum Marley is explored even more as a hero is going rescuing the original Wasp, Janet. Now this does raise some questions because of course they save her and they pull her out. And questions abound. The most obvious question, how did she survive down there? It's been how many years and she's still alive, too. In the first Ant-Man, Hank Pym said that the quantum realm of time works differently. How did she age just perfectly the right amount to also have aged with Hank, who wasn't in the quantum realm? And finally, what are these new powers that Janet has after being in the quantum realm for so long? Apparently she was soaking up all this quantum energy and now has these new powers. If you were hoping that this film was going to answer those questions, well, too bad! Because in the mid credit scene, we see Scott being sent into the quantum realm by Hank, Janet, and Hope. And while he's down there collecting this quantum energy, somewhere else in the world a big bad villain snaps his fingers and half the population disappears, including Hank, Janet, and Hope, leaving a poor Ant-Man stuck in the quantum realm. And cue Ant-Man 3. Now if I had to give Ant-Man and the Wasp a final score, I would give it a solid B+. Maybe on the verge of an A-, minus, but I feel like I can't give it an A because I didn't find it as thrilling as I wanted it to be. I wasn't disappointed in it, it was exactly what I wanted it to be, but I don't think it has as much grandeur or anything else that makes it special enough to be up in that A grade category. So solid B plus, it was funny, it was entertaining, there was action sequences, you root for these heroes, and it's just a fun film to watch.